some of them in the center have a sort of feathery bit and others in the center have a thing that looks like a pinhead with the things it's quite round and solid um, and the ones are, they're called pin and the ones with the feathery bits are called thrum it's called pin and thrum and it's not that they're sort of male and female flowers what it is both flowers have got male and female parts the male are the parts that give up the pollen uh, and the female part are the bits that receive the pollen and they're reversed the ones that have the pollen part at the top have their female receptors lower down it's basically it's down to the, the length of the stalks that support them and they do it because things like a butterfly which has a long tongue puts the tongue down through the flower to get to the nectar at the bottom the sugar which the flower obviously secretes to attract pollination pollinating insect and as its tongue passes the sort of pollen producing part uh, and then it's sucking the nectar the pollen will stick to the tongue but it'll stick mostly at that particular sort of height above the nectar now if the um, butterfly then goes to another flower which is in the same place. ritual sites death burial and worship in prehistory under this category come some of the most mysterious monuments on Dartmoor. Barrows, sometimes marked as tumulus on maps, or cairns, are by far the commonest type, with several hundred examples surviving. Strictly speaking, a barrow is primarily of earth construction, while a cairn is composed mostly of stone. However, many barrows contain cairns within their structure. The earliest type of barrow known on Dartmoor is the so-called chamber tomb which can be identified either by the mass of stones used in the construction of the burial chamber or by traces of a long mound covering them. Only a few examples are known, as at Spinster's Rock near Drew Stainton and at Corringdon Ball on Southern Dartmoor. They all probably contained collective burials and may well be 5,000 to 6,000 years old. Several different types of round barrows or cairns are known Massive stone cairns occur frequently, though not exclusively, on rootstocks, as at three barrows. More often, barrows take the form of low mounds, sometimes only discernible, because their vegetation and cover differs from their surroundings. Some barrows have no mound at all, but consist of a long ring of small stones, about one or two metres wide, enclosing a level area. These are known as ring cairns, and are not infrequently found next to a more conventional barrow mound, as on Coston Beacon. Rippers Hill and Saddlesborough. Other barrows have a retaining circle of upright space stones more or less defined in their circumference. The smaller barrows are often associated with stone rows. The diameter of barrows range from 3 metres to 35 metres and they can be anything up to 3.5 metres in height. Most barrows contain burials and many of these were in cysts which in their exposed form are quite common on Dartmoor. They consist of slabs of granite forming a box-like structure internally roughly 1 metre by 0.6 of a metre by 0.8 of a metre in depth, which is usually sunk rather below the level of the ground and then covered with another slab to form a lid. In most cases, the cover stone has now been displaced. The date range of the round barrows is probably about 2,500 to 1,000 years BC. About 70 stone rows are known on Dartmoor. They are either single, double or triple rows of stones running roughly in a straight line and varying in length from 32 metres to the 3.4 kilometres of one outstanding example in the Urn Valley. The stones are set some distance apart from each other and they range in height from a few centimetres to 2.5 metres. Occasionally, complex groupings of rows occur as it shuttle down where a new row was discovered in 1975-76. Several freestanding stone circles, without any associated barrow mound, are known as at Score Hill, Langston Moor and Grey Weathers. Their diameters range from 19 to 35 metres. The lack of any central mound or other feature, and their generally large size, makes confusion with retaining circles of barrows unlikely. Also seen are tall, upright stones, often three metres or so high, 
either isolated as a clear down man or associated with stone rows as a drizzle them. They are known as standing stones. Most of these ritual monuments appear to date to the period between about 3,000 to 1,000 years BC. But the function of the rows, circles, and standing stones is, to say the least, obscure. One possibility is that some of them were connected with observing the movement of the sun, moon, and certain stars.